coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's that. And then you know what I think a lot of dudes, we fail to realize sometimes, man, uh, we don't prepare for coming home, man. You definitely, like he said, some people be overwhelmed. You definitely have to prepare for coming home because things is different. And by us having being convicts, having records already, you know, we can't even raise our voice too loud at the wrong person and definitely can't get violent or we right back in prison. Right, right, right. So, you know, we got to we got to prepare on, on, on and think about how we going to react and respond to certain situations, man. And uh, I remember you telling me a story, telling a story about before uh, we had met where you had went to a gas station. Yeah, that's crazy, too, because this I, I don't even know if I even told you that I'm going to show you that, too, man. That's crazy because that situation happened. Well, I've seen it. I've seen it on uh, on YouTube. Right. Yeah. It was it, it was so crazy because um I when the dude I was just trying to tell the dude girl that, that it, somebody had left some free gas. Right. Because when I pulled up, it was like a lady. She was like, "Look, I got like fifteen dollars worth of gas or something on here. If you want it, you can get it." I I, I overcharged them. And she said, I don't even feel like going back in there and get it. But I had just got gas. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I ain't need it. So when I go in the store and grab something and come back out, I saw her pulling up at the pump. So I was trying to tell her, look, you get some free gas. Somebody just left some gas in there. So when I pull up on it, I'm telling her that, man, the dude, he could just get out the passenger seat. And he come in and he, he pulling the chrome out. Right, right. So I'm looking at him. <laughs> and like you said, you know, my whole... A uh, 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 persona and their thing is I meet force with force Like in prison somebody coming at you like that with a knife You either run and get stabbed in the back or you go at him You know what I'm saying So when he came my first instinct was to try But I had to check myself because this is a gun man right, right. You know what I'm saying this dude gonna kill me So I was like boom and I was like man what you doing And he was like what, what you doing And I tried to explain I said man, I'm just trying to tell your people they can get some free gas man right. You know and then he like oh oh like it's just that You know yeah, he didn't yeah, want to talk like to me natural. Right? conversation with me and explain to me that he just got out and you out and you running around like right, that it's right. crazy but just last week i go to the same gas station and i see him yeah him and, him and the girl right when you got down here i got pictures up on the phone he said yo i said I, I walk in the store as soon as i walk in the store i see him i'm like hey yo man you remember me and he was like oh yeah what's up oh, man yeah yeah man. i said man you, you got yourself together man he was like yeah <laughs> man yeah and boom, 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 he was like, yeah. I said, did you go watch my YouTube? I did a story about you. He said, I ain't gonna lie, man. I ain't been watching it. I've been, you know, I've been moving face. But I told people about it. I said, man, you need to go watch it, man. Yeah. He was like, yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell him. And I gave him some more cars. He was like, man, I'm gonna take a picture with him. I took a picture with him and his girl. I'm gonna show y'all that picture soon. I'm, I'm gonna show it to you when we finish. But yeah, and I took a picture with a big old dude who looked like Bone Crusher. Remember the rapper Bone right, Crusher? Right, right. Big old light skinned version of Bone Crusher, right? But. Just to say what you said though, that incident alone, if I don't respond in the right manner, either I lose my life or the situation get crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because you you can't <coughs> act the way you think, like I say all the time. You can't do what you think. You got to think about what you're doing. And see, once when I was young, I just did what I think. Whatever I thought, whatever came to my mind, that would be my reaction. Right. But when you get older now, you got to think about what you're doing because... Now I know it's always going to be consequences, no matter what it is. Right. It's always going to be consequences, man. And that was an ugly situation over nothing. You see what I'm saying? Over nothing. And then my, 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 my prison mentality, I still got to check it. Right. Because when I see him, my first thing, I, I, I'm like, man, I could have you know, did anything to you, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You going to pull something like that on me, and now you just walk around really, really like right, that. Right. And then, you know, like I know in prison, that ain't going to never happen. Right, right. You know, somebody do something to you today, and they walk around the mall like it ain't never happened, just like the story I just told y'all about my homeboy, Big A. And you forget about it, and you done did something to somebody, this un it's unforgivable. Because if you forgive it in prison, then now you're a victim. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, man, but that situation I had right there, that was one of the, the wildest situations I'd had since I've been on. But I'd had people drive and cut me off in the road and stick their hand out, give me the middle finger and right. yell, you know what I'm saying? I had a girl just recently do the same thing. She trying to get behind me in the lane, but I'm following somebody because I don't know where I'm going. Right. And being the lane letter in, man, this girl lost her mind cussing yeah, me out, yeah. man. And then followed me. Mm. And I'm 
looking at me when I'm like, this girl follow me. She literally followed me and on the phone, banging on the side of the car, giving me the thing and everything. I'm like, lady, I'm just trying to stay behind this person. I F you. I'm like, man, these people crazy out here, man. And I, I had a similar situation where I'm, I go to this gas station and it's always crowded. And it's the gas is real cheap. And so uh, the guy behind me, at some point in time, he started honking his horn, calling me a bunch of bees and this and that. So, you know, I pull over. I tell him what you want to do. I, I lost it. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. I hop out the car. Now the first thing he going to holler at is, you better not hit me or I'm going to call the police. And so that, <laughs> this is the type of thing, you know, because like he was saying earlier, you know, this man said he done, what, 33? 33. Now you guys got to realize that's a lifetime. And so when you're in prison, it's a different type of, it's a different type of monster. And so we... We become accustomed to responding certain ways to certain things sometimes. So now being free, it's really hard to, like he said, we have to we have to think about our next step. Right. We have, now we don't think about what we're going to do. We got to think about what not to do. Yeah, exactly. And so this particular gentleman I got into it with, he tells me, I get out the car, and uh, he tells me that if he was uh, 20 years younger, He'd kick my butt. You know what I'm saying? And so, but that's that's just the type of stuff that we go through, man. And like he was saying when we was younger, we 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 had the liberty or we had the I would say the luxury of being able to just react, you know. Yeah. Now we older, we gotta think, man, and that's the difference I know, and probably for you too. For me, when I was younger, you know, I really didn't care. And but now going to prison doing all that time, it showed me how I was ignorant enough not to even know what I had to care about. And that's the difference between now and then. Now I didn't care. Now I care. You know, I got things to me that I understand that's important that I don't want to lose. You know, my freedom first and foremost. And then being with my family and all these other type of luxuries and amenities that they have out here on the street. So it's all about caring, man, and, and not inconveniencing myself first and foremost, you know. Absolutely. I tell people all the time, man, a, a dude can go more places, see more things, have more fun in a 24 hour period on the streets than he will in decades in prison. Right, right. Decades, let that sink in there. One 24 hour day out here, you see more, you can just drive to the store and walk around the store and come back. That right there is more experience, more visuals, more than a man in prison for decades will see. Cause we see the same walls, the same bars, the same officers, the same inmates, the same room every day. It's nothing changing. It's, it's, it's like Groundhog Day. So I be telling these young dudes, I said, bro, all the things that you love, if you really love them, understand that doing time is removing you away from those things. Right. So right. if you really love them, if you really need them, best believe they're going to be out of your life, period. Ain't no, oh, I'm sorry now, well, wait a minute, I messed up. Nah, you tr we trying to tell you before you get in that position. Because once you're in that position, it ain't nothing going to help you. Right. Period. So if you love all your little cell phones, you love your women, you love going out when you want to, you love your clothes, you love your good food, because you ain't eating nothing good in there. If you love all that stuff, prison ain't where you want to go. Because all that's gone. And, and it's funny that you said it about going to the store, because when I got released, that was just one of my favorite pastimes, just going to Walmart. Going to Walmart, just looking at the beautiful women. And uh, I can't, I can't uh, even count on how many times when I was in prison, I would be yearning for small stuff. Uh, apple juice, yeah. french fries, <laughs> plums, just the small things that people out here take for granted, you know. I would be dying for the taste of some of that stuff in there, because like he said, you know, out there in California, they feed you the same thing repetitively, especially for um, for uh, for breakfast. On Mondays we had the same thing. Tuesday we had the same thing. Wednesday every single day. Sundays I believe was pancakes. And uh, you know now sometimes uh, there'll be a little difference in the dinners, but the the uh, breakfast was the same thing every single day. And uh, like you were saying, they don't understand, man, how how you you will to become to uh, miss the certain thing that you found or maybe you didn't even realize how important they was until they got taken away from you. Absolutely. I mean, everything, man, it's just, it, it, just like you said, and it's the same down here too. They feed, it's the same menu. It's just different days, but they, they just rotate the same right. menu. It ain't no more than about six or seven meals. Right. They rotate that same menu all the time, all the time. And I don't know about up there. I know they ain't all of the garbage there. Yeah, oh, it's trash. All of it is just garbage, man. Did you, you wouldn't even feed to, to, to your dog for real. 
people who are on the street. But this is what they do. And like I say, you have no choice because your only other choice is to go to commissary. And you just spending money, all that is jacked up prices. And then you eating a little bit uh, better, but not so much. Right. You just eating junk food. You know, you're not really eating you no know, real food. And then all the stuff that's not junk food is processed. So you eating processed or junk food just to keep from eating straight trash. You know what I'm saying? But that's how they do down here too. They feed like that. And then the, the portions they give you is nothing. We used to get rotten fruit. Man, we you walk in the kitchen, man. The kitchen guy actually got um like the things that you hang up for catch flies and stuff. Oh right, right. Yeah, that's in all the, in the kitchen. That's in the kitchen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's in the kitchen, man. You know the the, the prisons I've been on had mice, and you know what I'm saying. The mice might be in your cell at night, might be going through your commissary. They was infested with ants. I mean, it's just a horrible situation, man. If you, if, like I say, you got to really. I don't, like I said, I don't know, people got different views. Like I said, after I did 33 years, to me, I look at things a lot different. You got to really, really have some um, some strong feelings about whatever it is that you have about that you feel like you can put yourself in a position that you might go to prison. You got to really, I, because I just can't see it now. It just don't add up to me. It don't add up to me because, like I say, you giving away the most important commodity that you have in life, which is time. You giving it away. Can't get it back. For free. And you do not know how much you got left on this earth. So why would you give away anything when you don't know what you have left? You're not, you're not going to give away your last amount of food because you know it's your last amount. When you know what you got, you know what you got to spare. You don't know how much life you have, so you don't know what you got to spare. And when you're sitting in prison, you're just giving away time off your life. I know dudes who went in there, man, and came out and died shortly after they got out. Dudes who died before they got out. Right. You know, and never was able to be free again. Never. And it's always in their mind. They probably felt like they was going to be, you know. But like I say, the transition, man, you have to you have to get out here and want to stay out here. And if you're out here, you have to try to stay out here without going in there. That's the difference. You never have to go in there. That's a choice. Right. You never have to go in there. You never have to experience the things that <coughs> this man has experienced in 24 years because I'm sure just knowing him the little time that I have known him, he grateful to be able to survive that ordeal, as am I. Most definitely. Because it won't guarantee for me, man, I can't count how many times my life was on the line in there. I, it's, it's uncountable, you know. And the only reason I'm here is because I feel like it was my purpose to be telling y'all why not to go in there. You know what I'm saying? So take heed to these things that's being said, man, and, and understand that uh, you, you really got it good out here. Just like he said, from the plums, the apple, the food, your family, just to being able to comfort somebody with what they're going through, being able to be present when they're going through something, being able to get up in the morning and do what you want to do, not what someone else is telling you to do, right. not what someone else is ordering you to do, not what someone else is mandated for you to do, but what you want to do. As a human being, that's freedom. To be able to decide if you want to steal lay down and get some rest for a little longer. You can't even do that in prison no more. They can't even do it that in Virginia prison. Mm. They wake you up. Wow. You got to be up at a certain amount of time. You got to make your bed up. You got to clean your room. Man, at one time right before I left, they would start having cell inspections where they come around and even what they call grooming inspections. Where you have to be shaved. You have to have your nails cut a certain length. Oh, your wow. hair had to be cut. Yeah, they were yeah. starting to do this. They started to make it more and more like a slave camp. You know, you have to look a certain way, act a certain way. But it's all about control. And it's also all about taking away your pride and your dignity in yourself. Because you're a grown person being told what to do, how to live. And now so much as to how to even look. So it's, it's, this, this is not a life for a human being. And I say that and I mean that it's not a life for a human being, man. So, you know, we just got to make better decisions, man, when we out here and why we out here. And this is why I do these videos so y'all can get this understanding, man. And like I say, it's universal. He way up there on a whole nother coast and it's the same. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same. And what you were speaking on reminded me of a situation when I was in the day room one time. Now, the day room is basically where we are allowed to hang out, play games, uh, cards, Monopoly, Domino's, watch TV, and they got these tables. And the, and the tables in the day room are, are basically the same tables that they have in the chow hall. And i never forget this one uh, CEO, her name was Miss Ellsbury. I was sitting on top of the, uh, the table in the day room. And she told me, don't sit on top of the table. So I got off the table. About two or three days later, we go in the chow hall to where we eat dinner. 
Uh, now we're we're in Ironwood, mind you, and she had already worked a double. Ironwood probably get up to maybe 110, 115. Now you know, so she she had worked one shift and was working another shift. So now it's uh we going in there for dinner. Now she is sitting on the table that we going to eat on. And this used to be my pet peeve, you know, the the uh the COs would actually sit their butt on the table. Now in Ironwood also it was um the seating was you filled in the next seat. So you had no choice. Like if the CO was sitting on the table, we didn't have a choice to go to another table if it happened to come up. Well that's you know once we pick our right. tray up and, and you know that was the next seat available. So uh, well, while we going through the line I look at her, I said, Hey Miss Ellsbury, get your butt off the table. She looked at me and her whole face turned red. And I said, Yeah Miss Ellsbury, I'm talking to you. Get off the table. But that's the type of stuff that we have to go through through there. The guards don't care two flies about you. You know, they're going to take advantage of you anytime they get. And when you get in a situation, most of the time, they're going to write up the report. They're going to be dishonest. And then they're going to send a report to their superior. And then you have to go to a hearing. And, of course, the superior, nine times out of ten, is going to ride with their uh, colleague. You know, so it's, it's, it's horrible. They do the same thing down here. They, like... You know, just for what you said, as far as like sitting on the table, right. they'll do things right in front of your face, and, and then it's like torture. They try to do things right in front of your face that you can't do. We don't supposed to have gum, but they come to work chewing gum, right. all in your face. You know what I'm saying? But you don't supposed to have gum. You know, they at one time before we had certain sodas, they come to work with the sodas. They drinking the sodas all out there. They eating all out there in front of us. Right. You know, when you supposed to actually be doing your job, you stand out there eating, drinking sodas, and talking trash. But then you barking rules and regulations to me about what I right, should not right, be doing. Right. So it's like I say, they look right through you. They look past you. They treat you like a subhuman. You know, but then they want to tell you don't be an animal, but this is what they're treating you like. Right. You know, so in the conditions that you're living in, it's animalistic. So it, it's just, it's just, a, it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword when you're in there, brother. And like I say, I thank God every day I'm out here, man. I'm appreciative. I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm going to try to educate brothers as much as I can, try to keep them from going in there and, and, and falling for the same tricks that I fell for, because that's all it was, is tricks. These traps are set up in society and they've been set up for, for hundreds and hundreds of years and people keep falling for them and keep being repetitive and repetitive. The same thing I fell for, somebody fell for 20 years before me and 20 years before them and 20 years before them. That's because of the education. So we need the education and we need to inform people. We keep telling these young kids what not to do, but we're not telling them why not to do it. Right. We're not telling them what the consequences is. We're not telling them what they're going to really be facing. They be moving without knowing what the real consequences is. They know, oh, I'm going to get in trouble or I might get in trouble if I get caught. But you don't know the type of trouble you're going to get in. You know, that's where the lack of information comes in at, man. But, right. Yeah, but uh, anything that, 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 that you um, get yourself into, man, and and think that you can get yourself out of it just as easy is, a, is an illusion. Right. You know, that's an illusion. It looked like it just went dark again. I don't know. Yeah, it probably went dark. It still gonna be running though. It's different. what's the name still going. On. So yeah, my anything you want to tell them, man, in closing or something because uh like I say, uh, I appreciate you coming down here, brother. It's been a, it's been an honor and a pleasure. We definitely gonna keep on networking. We definitely gonna keep on chopping it up. But um I I appreciate you coming down here, bro. You were, you were the first one that reached out. And made that trick to come over there. I wish I could have came up there, but um, like I say, when time allows me to, we most definitely gonna link again. That's for sure. Oh well, I just like to say that you know initially somebody uh like I say told me that I should check you out, and the day I happened to check you out, you wasn't doing a story. You was doing a positive message, and what I like about you was the message you you done was extremely positive. And you was talking some real stuff, and it made real sense. I forget exactly what it was, man. And so that's what um, drew, drew me into you. So right. I left a comment, man. And ever since then, we've been in touch back and forth. And it's been definitely a pleasure, you know, uh, coming down here to visit you. Because I always like the wisdom that you expound on. Uh, the things you always pushing positive. You know, every time I see you, you pushing positive and you talking positive. And so uh, it's, it's been a pleasure meeting you. And it's been fun coming down here. And I'll definitely be back. Uh, I would like all y'all out there, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, check me out. Uh, I'm on YouTube under 16 to Life. That's the number 1616DA. 
L-I-F-E, 16 to Life. I also rap. I got some music on there, some songs on there. Don't get it twisted because I'm a little <laughs> bit older. Cause don't think I don't be gassing. I, I keep telling y'all, I'm not Curtis Blow. Check me out. I got a song called Never Gave Me Therapy. It's on all streaming platforms. You can uh, you can type in 16 to Life Music on YouTube. And a lot of my songs, audio and video will pop up. Check your boy out, man. We get it. For real, salute. Salute. I want, I want to say this too. And I ain't saying it because you're here with me. I've told y'all before, same thing. When I first, when you first reached out and we, we connected or whatever, I went and started watching your videos. I, I was I was I was digging the stories you was telling, the way you was telling the way, and I was comparing them to the things that, that I done seen and things that I done experienced. So I knew you was telling the truth. I knew about these incidents because, like I said, it's universal. universal. You know what I'm universal. saying? So I was digging that off the top. And then when you was telling me about the music and everything, and just like I told you, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna listen to his music. I was thinking the same thing, y'all. I'm like, man, this 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 cat rapping, man, this is my age. You know what I'm saying? So he said, I'm gonna send you the CDs. And like the real brother that he is, like a week later, I get the CDs. I give him my information, he sent me the CDs. So I get this, I'm like, what is this? So I said, oh, okay, I said this 16 the life music. So boom, I get it. We just give it leave a little bit later on that day. I get in the car, I pop the joint in. Man, let me tell you something. I was I, I was pleasantly surprised. I'm not telling you no joke. I ride right now in that car to his music more than anybody else's music. He got some some awesome songs on 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 there. I did my video uh, uh to his joint on my uh, Instagram. Go check out my Instagram. You know I did a video to his song called Salute, which is one of my favorite. I think it should be the any dude, the real dude, the dead time and prison time. I think it should be the prison anthem. That's just how good it is. So yeah, y'all go check out his music, man. It's fire. You gonna like it. You know, because I like it. I think I'm a connoisseur in music. I sit there and listen to it for, for 33 years. So I think I'm a good authority on music, man. And I know good music, man. He got good music. He's a good dude. So y'all go check him out, man. I appreciate y'all. As always, I tell y'all, be safe, be smart, make good decisions out there. I'll see y'all the next time, man. Salute my brother. I appreciate it. Y'all down. Resume normal program. Resume normal program. Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.